Neither Russia nor China want the war in Ukraine to end, but for different reasons. Russian President Vladimir Putin arrived in China accompanied by a large delegation. This is his first official trip abroad since being re-elected to a fifth term. As Business Insider writes, China is Russia's most important market. But Putin isn't just courting Xi for economic support. The Russian leader is also forging strategic relationships. The two states are allies not because they share any special cultural or ideological affinities. Rather, they are united because of the old adage that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Their partnership is largely practical, based on the principles of hard power devoid of ideological pretense or posturing said Shells Michta of the Center for European Policy Analysis. As the expert noted, both sides believe that they will gain more from continuing to work together than they risk losing. It is fair to say that without China's economic support, Russia would not have been able to withstand the economic sanctions imposed on it by the West after Putin's all-out invasion of Ukraine, Michta wrote. However, the trade boom served China's interests more than Russia's, placing Moscow in an increasingly dependent position. For example, Russia now exports raw materials to China, while China ships finished products, especially cars, to Russia. A key item on Putin's agenda in China would be to get the Chinese to approve a proposed new gas pipeline from Siberia to China, as Russia has lost its market to Europe due to sanctions. By selling large amounts of cheap gas to China, Russia could potentially tie Beijing into a closer geopolitical alliance. Convincing China to commit to such a large project during a war would be a geopolitical coup for Moscow, demonstrating to the West and the Global South that it can deepen its energy relationship with China despite war, analysts at Columbia University Center for Global Energy Policy wrote. An increasingly dependent Russia could offer Beijing key military technologies, helping China make huge strides in the sector. The increasingly close relationship between Russia and China poses a challenge for the West. The Institute for the Study of War has estimated that the Russians have advanced no more than 8 kilometers from the border in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast and intend to establish a buffer zone rather than advance deeper. ISW noted that the pace of Russian offensive operations in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast has continued to decrease after the Russians initially occupied areas that, as now confirmed by Ukrainian officials, were less defended. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Ukrainian military officials stated that Ukrainian forces have partially stabilized the situation in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast, which borders Russia. Nazar Volashin, spokesperson for the Kortitsia Operational Strategic Group, stated that Russian forces are trying to achieve tactical successes near the settlements of Lukyansi and Vovchansk to establish footholds for further advancement, but Ukrainian counterattacks, shelling and drone strikes were preventing Russian forces from consolidating in these areas. The Kharkiv Oblast administration representatives stated that constant Russian attacks were preventing Ukrainian forces from establishing fortifications within 3 to 5 kilometers from the border with Russia in Kharkiv Oblast. They added that Ukrainian forces have constructed the first and second lines of defense at distances of 12 to 13 kilometers and 20 kilometers from the border, respectively. ISW estimates show that Russian forces have advanced at most 8 kilometers from the border in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast. The forces operating on Russian territory can easily deliver artillery strikes on Ukrainian defensive positions near the border. However, restrictions on the use of Western-provided weapon systems to strike rear Russian areas across the border make stationary Ukrainian defensive positions near the border vulnerable and possibly defenseless.